indirect object pronouns. You probably discussed indirect object pronouns briefly in Spanish 1. Um, a lot of people don't even know what they are in English, so let's not worry too much about what they're called grammatically. I, I kind of like grammar, so sometimes I talk about the grammar stuff. I know a lot of teachers are a lot more um, into the communication. Grammar doesn't matter, but I, I, I enjoy the grammar. I, under, I enjoy understanding how things work. Okay, so let's talk about indirect object pronouns. We'll do a whole other podcast on these. But just briefly here, real, real quick overview. As the name insinuates, an indirect object receives the action of the verb indirectly. So if a verb does an action, it's what's receiving that action indirectly. What this means is that the indirect object in the sentence indicates the to or for whom the action is completed. In the sentence, Matt gives the book to John. Matt gives the book to John. Matt is the subject. He is the one performing the action of the verb, to give. The book is the direct object. It is directly receiving the action of the verb. Okay. John, though, is the indirect object because he indirectly receives the action of the verb. The book is given, but given to John. So we have, <laughs> if, if, if I don't have you confused too much yet, Matt gives the book. So there's our main thing. But John is sort of this third party thing. It's being given to John. He's indirectly receiving the giving. John is a noun, so in this sentence, uh, John is the indirect object, noun. When we replace to John with to him, the indirect object noun becomes an indirect object pronoun. Remember, a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. So instead of saying gives the book to John, indirect object noun, now we say it gives the book to him, indirect object pronoun. If you need this a little slower, you need to read it to kind of um, process it, you can, you're welcome to hit the show notes, and uh, I'll have basically this, this, uh, this part of it written out there for you. Okay, you'll notice that in English we use two words to identify the indirect object. In the example, those two words were to him. In Spanish, both words are wrapped up into one little indirect object pronoun, le, L-E, le. So here's a list of some of the indirect object pronouns in Spanish. To or for me, me. To or for you, informal, talking to a friend. To or for you, te. To or for him, her, or usted, the you formal, le. To or for us, nos. To or for y'all, the informal, it's used in Spain, I don't deal with it too much in these podcasts. To or for y'all, os, O-S. To or for them or y'all, the plural third person, les. Me, te, le, nos, os, les. So you may be wondering what all this has to do with gustar. It's because we're going to use these to, to say to whom the apples are pleasing, to whom the beats are not pleasing, etc. Okay. Now, where we put these indirect object pronouns does matter. These indirect object pronouns, me, te, le, nos, os, les, usually go before a conjugated verb or connected to an infinitive verb. Okay, there are some, some other instances like command form where this doesn't apply, but generally speaking, they be, go before a conjugated verb or connected to an infinitive. So let's look at a few examples here. In English, you would say, I like apples. But the structure we would use in Spanish is, to me are pleasing the apples. Me is the to me. Gustan, they please, las manzanas. Me gustan las manzanas. Now this is where I see the most students trip up here. They see the verb gustar, and they, they'll want to think gusto, because it's I like. No, no, no. Remember, gustar means to be pleasing, is a more accurate description. So what is doing the pleasing? Well, it's not gusto, because gusto would be I am pleasing. No, we want to say the apples are pleasing to me. So if the apples are pleasing, then gustar gets conjugated as gustan. Las manzanas gustan. The apples please. Well, to whom? To me. Me gustan las manzanas. Okay, here's another example. You like to eat. The structure then would be to you, 
is pleasing to eat. Te gusta comer. Te gusta comer. comer. To eat, comer, is pleasing. Gusta to you. Te. Te gusta comer. We like the book. Okay, in English, we like the book. But in Spanish, remember, the book is what's doing the pleasing. So the book is pleasing to us. Or to us is pleasing the book. Nos is the to us. El libro is the subject. And so it would conjugate it gusta. Nos gusta el libro. Nos gusta el libro. Nos gusta el libro. Te gusta comer. Me gustan las manzanas. Okay, I go back over those others so we can kind of refresh what's going on here. Me gustan las manzanas. Te gusta comer. Nos gusta el libro. He likes your car. So to him is pleasing your car. Le gusta. To him it pleases. Tu coche. Le gusta tu coche. Le gusta tu coche. Now, we're not really sure here if the le is to him, to her, or to usted. So you can always clarify with a él le gusta tu coche. A ella le gusta tu coche. So yeah, whenever you have the le, uh, you can add the a él, a Mario, a Miguel. You know, you can add that a, then the person to clarify. A ella le gusta tu coche. A él le gusta tu coche. And that will clarify what the le is. Now you can also use that a uh, to emphasize. Um, we'll talk about that more in just a second here. Okay, so there are three things I want you to observe in the in the examples that I just gave. Number one, the indirect object pronoun. I call it the IOP sometimes just for short. So the indirect object pronoun in these examples is always before the conjugated ver form of the Spanish verb gustar. Okay, number two. When it is only one thing that is pleasing, we conjugate the verb as gusta. But when there is more than one item that is pleasing, we conjugate the verb as gustan. Because again, singular gusta, simple conjugation, plural gustan. Okay. Now if you're not sure what the difference is between gusta and gustan, I recommend that you check out a podcast or do some search on basic present tense conjugations in Spanish. The difference between gusta and gustan. It's like el habla. Ellos hablan. Uh, same thing there, a or an. Okay, and there are other words that we'll be studying later on uh, throughout the year or throughout your study of Spanish that operate the same way. One of those is encantar, which means, some books will say it means to really like, but what it really means is to be enchanting, or as we would say in English, really like or love. Me encanta el español. Me encanta. It is enchanting to me. It is very super pleasing to me, el español. It's a little beyond gustar. Okay, We'll do with more with encantar later, but I just want to let you know that it, it follows that same route, so I want to plant that seed in your head right now. Okay, um, I'll tell you a little bit, a bit more about me here as we wind up. Okay, um, Me gusta la tecnología. Uh, me gusta leer. No tengo mucho tiempo para leer, pero me gusta leer un poco. Uh, me gusta... ¿Qué más? Uh, me gusta correr. Me gusta correr un poco. Me gusta viajar. Uh, no me gustan las remolachas. But now I want you to answer some questions about yourself. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and you try to come up with some answers, okay? Here we go. Let me ask you a few questions. ¿Te gusta correr? ¿Te gusta correr? ¿Te gusta estudiar? ¿Te gusta leer libros? ¿Te gusta dibujar? ¿Qué te gusta comer? ¿Qué te gusta comer? ¿Te gusta ir al cine? ¿Te gusta ir al cine? Okay, even though there is a large focus on gustar, I did that because you're already familiar with gustar, so it makes it an easy springboard, an easy jumping point to get into these indirect object pronouns. In class, we're going to be transitioning from using me gusta, te gusta, le gusta 
to me compro, uh, me compro, he bought for me. Um, yo te regalé, I gave to you. Um, me interesaban, they were interesting to me. We're going to start using these indirect object pronouns now with phrases about talking about our childhood for this chapter. Okay, gracias por escuchar. You got to write three sentences. Use indirect object pronouns in three sentences. Um, I would use uh, verbs. Look at the vocab for the end of our chapter. And use the verbs that are related with this chapter. There are a few of them there that have the indirect object pronouns already there. But again, three sentences using indirect object pronouns. I'll have you guys put them on the board tomorrow. Okay, gracias por escuchar. Ciao.